Hey, and welcome back everyone to our weekly Orboot Rust and Hacking session. So, yeah, uh, as you may hear, I haven't fully recovered yet. So this time it's my nose, last time it was my throat. Uh, but I think we're going to get a bit further today. So I'm, I'm feeling mostly well, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, I might just need a second every now and then. Uh, but that will be okay. And what we're going to uh, look at today is this year, uh, another chapter from the Rust Embedded book, and that is on singletons, which is something that we sort of talked about last time as well. Um, but we were actually looking at it from a different angle in a sense. So what we looked at last time was the embedded hell, and we looked at not the design patterns yet, uh, but the portability chapter. So that is actually a later chapter. So we skipped this here. Um, that, did, I did, that on, did I do that on purpose? Um, sort of, yes. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm not reading things in a linear manner anyway. Uh, it, I just grabbed this chapter because I wanted to essentially show what we currently have in Orbit already um, and how we can uh, currently work with things. But um, yeah, then we also saw at some point, well, it doesn't yet work uh, with the Vision 5 board yet. Um, for some reason. So we essentially took the same code that we also had for a different board, tried to apply it, but um, it was hanging, apparently. At least we didn't see any further output on the serial. And yeah, so today we want to look at this here. Um, so we're going to look at peripherals again. And what we want to do is we want to get our serial to initialize once and then have it available everywhere so that we can just use a macro such as the print or print ln macro that we actually need to define ourselves. So if you uh, use Rust for writing a hosted application, usually that print or uh, print ln function, they are coming from the hosted environment and there is a predefined macro for it. However, in our case here, we cannot use that because we have to provide it ourselves because we are actually now in control of the hardware and now through the macro, we need to define how it actually will access the hardware. So yeah, that is what we were uh, neck deep in already. So if we uh, look at this here again, let me switch over to the code. So this is the code that we can't have. And as you may see, I haven't really changed anything since last time. So we have this function here, set logger, and then we have this uh, global log logger. So this is the struct for it. And this is a pub. Well, uh, for this crate here, it's a static, it's called logger. So in, in uh, uppercase, so if you define um, global variables in, in many languages and also here in Rust, we just completely uppercase everything. So we do also the same thing, like if we define a constant that represents a register or something, uh, we would do the same thing. Um, and then we wanted to do this here, uh, we call it once. And what we want to do is we want to be able to only initialize this thing once. And if it's already initialized, we can just skip the initialization. Like if we accidentally do it, right? So at runtime, we wouldn't want that to error or interfere or something. So we just want to continue operating normally. Now, if we look at this here, um, in the REST embedded book, they're actually suggesting that it should be panicking if you were to do the initialization twice, or in, in this instance here, it's take serial. Um, Let's just neglect uh, where take zero exactly comes from right now. Um, but yeah, the, the fact that this year uh, would panic is a problem in our space, right? So when we write firmware or kernels or something, um, there is one thing we cannot and must not ever do, and that is just panicking and that would, you know, bring down the whole system. So, you know, uh, if, if you are in a hosted environment, it's perfectly fine if your application is panicking or so, I mean, depending of, on your needs, of course. Uh, but the thing is the system would still be running, right? So let's say, I don't know, your web browser is crashing or something, then typically your operating system would still keep running. Um, so yeah, this is something we actually do not really want to be runtime behavior. So we will just look at this here for inspiration. And the main thing we want to actually talk about it is this here. Uh, in Rust, it's called option. So option is a generic type that may contain anything that you define. So this is uh, the specific that you would give it. Um, 
and it may also contain nothing at the same time. So you you know you, you start with nothing, then you give it something, and then it contains something. And every time you would access it, uh, you could say, hey, um, is it now set or is it set to none? So like in, in other languages, it would be like null or null pointer or nil sometimes, uh, always depending a bit on your specific language. And you can also see this here already. So here we have the none type. And on the other side, we have the sum. So sum and none, um, uh, they, they are for the option generic so that, that you can talk about like, okay, have I said anything or not? So um, now how do we use this for setting up our serial port? So uh, you, you see the function they define here, and this is now where the take serial comes from uh, that we find down here. Uh, in, in this take serial function, what they're doing is they're replacing um, the uh, the instance of the serial. And uh, what, what they are doing here is they are, they're using the self-reference. So this here self, also like in many other languages, like mostly, you know, this maybe from object-oriented, like OO programming, uh, you, you have this reference to, you know, your, your own object or, or struct or whatever. It doesn't really matter here. Um, yeah, and th that's what the self here is. It would have a property called serial. So this is what is defined up here in the struct, right? Now, when you say replace, um, well, you would want to have the instance of a serial now. So yeah, we, we need to uh, look a bit closer here. So this here is saying uh, P is the result of replace the serial with none. Um, that, that looks a bit weird to me, to be honest. So I haven't really looked too, uh, too, do, too deep into this yet. Um, so let, let's actually see what happens here. So uh, here we're saying, um, ah, right. The, oh, now it actually makes sense. So yeah, the, the idea here in Rust is always the, uh, the idea of ownership, right? So in Rust, we say we, we can take an ownership of something and then only we are the current owner of something and nothing else can use it. So this is why the function here is actually called take serial now that we think about it. So take serial means, so I now replace the serial, which should have been set before, right? I, I take it and now I give the result back, um, but the internal uh, reference here is now gone because now I swapped it for none. So it's like, you know, I just said, okay, this is now a null pointer, uh, but the actual serial is now given to whoever requested it. So yeah, um, we, I mean, if we were to complete this, maybe we, there should also be a function to give a serial back, uh, which would say, hey, if it's none, then I can also take a serial back. Um, but it's, it's a bit weird because it could be another instance technically, but nevertheless, um, so what, what happens here is now if we call this here, um, this would work, uh, but if we do it for a second time and now we say unwrap here, the unwrap would be what's panicking, right? So yeah, unwrap essentially means, um, you know, to complete an operation and on panic, you would just bubble up the panicking. So yeah, you would technically need to catch that somehow. Um, but yeah, it's like, this is now the most uh, basic primitive that we have in our system. So you know, th there is no actually way, there is actually no way to, you know, go any further up. So um, yeah, if, if this is uh, bubbling any further, uh, our, uh, you know, our process, in, in this case, our initialization process, not, not process as in an operating system process, but in, you know, just what we're doing here, um, you know, that, that thing would just die off and that's exactly not what we want. Um, but we will, uh, try to do this here. So I want to use an option type actually because I kept thinking about uh, what we talked about last time where we were uh, speaking about mutexes and lock patterns. So, you know, different ways to uh, limit the access uh, to something in concurrency. And now the thing is when we initialize, so, uh, so when we initialize the, um, the peripherals, then we actually do this in a very sequential manner and we don't actually use anything like interrupts or multi-processing or multi-threads uh, or something. So it doesn't really concern us too much. So I'm, I'm not sure um, why we actually have this uh, code currently in Orbit. So uh, yeah, I, I did that in exchange with uh, somebody else. Um, maybe I should actually ask that back. Um, 
because I, I think that we are actually, uh, you know, overdoing things a bit. So that shouldn't really be necessary. So let's also do this here. Uh, so let's say option, uh, we now use this here in our code. So let's say logger instead of once, uh, I mean, we, we can still do this here, um, do, you know, doing the once thing to not be able to reinitialize it. Uh, but, but let's just do this uh, for now and say, okay, it's now a an option. And now if it's an option, uh, what do we do for the assignment? Well, um, we actually don't do anything, right? So uh, we would just say none. Does it work like that? Can I say this here? Can I say equals none? Okay, that seems to work. So yeah, of course, now we cannot call this method here. Um, that doesn't really matter even. Uh, but what we need to do is, now we need to do this replacement just like here, right? So what we're now going to do is, um, I actually don't know if this replace thing is a Rust method like that is magically globally available or something. Um, or if we can just do an assignment, I guess we can just do an assignment. Let's see. So I want to now say um, this here. So I, I'm passing the serial here, right? And now I want to say, hey, uh, this is now a serial. Um, so how do I do this? Uh, we already have this here. So we have the wrap thing. Um, that is something I still want to do. So let's just remove everything else here and say, okay, the uh, logger is now a wrapped serial. And does it even work like that? Hang on. So we have this here. We have locked logger. Um, do we even need locked logger? I don't think so because this is for, you know, having the mutex internally or something. So what we're gonna do just is say logger equals wraps equals wrap serial. Um, no, we don't need the match block anymore. Uh, yeah, but it's probably it's probably still a good idea to do this here. Okay, so there is a bunch of other things now going wrong, um, which we will need to check. But yeah, let's see. Uh, if this code would already compile currently. So let's just uh, ignore this part here. Uh, we can get back to this later, right? Okay, so that doesn't seem to work. Uh, why does it not work? Well, um, it says expected enum option and now we found a struct called log wrap. Okay, that does not work. So, oh, and now this here is also expected uh, mismatch types expected due to this. This is a bit of a strange message. It looks like there is the word missing or something. Um, but is it actually coming from here? So if we were not to do this, okay, then the above would be fine. Okay, so now we just need to figure out um, how we can how we can do this. So yeah, uh, we see now instead of log logger, we actually want to have something else, right? So we want to have an option. Um, which is for the wrap serial. So yeah, we can actually use the S that is defined here. And let's just move this further up now. So yeah, we, we now have this S. So now it's an option for an S, but it says expected due to this type. Okay, of course. So yeah. Um, okay, so now it says, okay, that doesn't work. Uh, how do we do this now? So let, let's comment this out again. Let's see if the above is still fine. Okay, that looks good. So do we have to say something like replace here? Can we just say replace? Uh, well, how does it know what to replace actually? Okay, so we replace, we pass something. We say replace logger. And we replace the logger with wrap serial. Uh, like this. Oh, typo, typo. Okay, uh, hang on. It was saying replace, replace. Core pointer. Ah, look. It's coming from core pointer. So that's interesting. Um, now, it's not happy about this. It's unsafe. Of course, uh, it sounds very unsafe to do pointer things. So let's just put the unsafe keyword here and then it will be happy. So hang on, like, like this. Okay. 
No, it's still complaining though. It says uh, mismatch types expected store pointer, but it found an enum option. So how does this really work? So here we could just say we replace the zero with none. Okay. Um, is oh look, we actually have a reference here. So we have the and. So let's say and logger, and I will repl replace that. Now the problem, of course, is uh, it differs in mutability, right? That's also what the message says here. And also we haven't really defined this to be something mutable. So yeah, how do, how do we do this? First of all, we say a mute logger, right? Um, now it's still a bit unhappy because it says uh, expected enum option again, but it found the log wrap struct, whatever. Okay. So, how does that work? Um, so with the wrap thing, uh, what we essentially do is we, we just give it a type. So, ah, yeah, this was actually because the, uh, the original serial struct that we had here was defined somewhere else, right? So we have the serial here, uh, which is coming from our init crate where we initialize the serial. We wrap it so that we can use it here um, with different options. So yeah, the wrapping thing is really just for doing that. Um, can we can we do this here? Can we say option wrap serial? Okay, that is interesting. Okay, now we have this problem here. Only traits defined in the current crate can be implemented. So this is how, why we actually did this, right? So we wanted to define the methods for um, for s so for s we wanted to define this so okay do we have to push the option here inside it looks a bit ridiculous at some point uh, okay so now that almost looks better what does it say here uh it's it's still it's still complaining about the option thing okay so yeah We, we need to do something else. So how do we how do we do this in, in Rust in general? So let's say uh, we have an option something and now we want to we want to do essentially we want to do something like a reassignment. Um, so let's let's see how, how this replace thing works. So rest replace or pointer PTR whatever here. So this is the replace function. The destination needs to be something that is mutable and the source needs to be something uh, that is of the same type. It doesn't have to be mutable here. So let's see. Uh, we, so we essentially need to have the same type. Um, so let's see. If this here is a wrapping serial and now this here is an, an option for a wrapping serial so can we actually say so we, we want this to be able to be none right um, so I want this to be able to be to be set or not but how does it actually work so now if the thing is if this here needs to be the same type again um, how do we, how do we do this here? I mean, this here would would look seriously odd, right? So if we were to say option now here, uh, option. So this is not how it works. It says expected function tuple struct or tuple variant or tuple. Uh, and I found an enum option. Okay. So but when we didn't have option. Then it was saying, uh, here it's expecting an option wrap serial. Isn't that weird? So let, let's see. We, we search for expected option. And let's see what it says here. Expected unit time. No. 
uh, try using the expected enum assist, help base, and whatever. Uh, pack matching, match, whatever. Uh huh. Expected. Oh, oh, look. This year might actually help us. Um, like, no, that's something. That's just a struct or something. Um, how about here? Oh, that doesn't really help us either. Huh. Now th that that's a bit annoying sometimes with Rust if you're not uh, if you're not experienced with this. It's it's really hard to understand the error messages sometimes. Um, sometimes they can be helpful. Uh, but to be honest, in my personal experience, uh, experience this is rather like. I have no idea how to resolve this issue. So, okay, I, I get the type mismatch, but that, so understanding the problem is not the issue, solving the problem is the issue. So the question is, how do we do this now? So maybe let's have a closer look again at the chapter in the Rust book, and let's see what else we can do. So we, we don't actually want to do this here, right? We, we actually want to have something which is initially none, and then we want to be able to assign it. So, yeah, I, I guess it boils down to this here. So why can't we just have global variables? And I actually skipped this here intentionally. So it says, um, blah, 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 the serial port equals serial port. So yeah, that doesn't really work. Um, so the question is, where would this be coming from, right? This has a few problems. It is a mutable global variable. And Rust, these are always unsafe to interact with. These are variables. Uh, these variables are also visible across your whole program, which means the borrow checker is unable to help you track references and ownership of these variables. So, yeah. Um, ownership can be very nice, but it's also a very big burden because now, you know, you, you need to understand how you do the ownership transfer and everything. So yeah, that, that is something inherently hard to understand. Uh, so from, from my experience at least. So yeah, now no, the problem is, so here my issue is, where does this actually come from, right? So where does the initial serial come from? So I, I cannot take the serial if I never had it. So what I need to be able to is actually to pass the serial. So I, don't, I want to do the opposite of that. Existing library support, that is interesting. So they have a singleton macro, um, that is nice, but why? How do these singletons make a noticeable difference? I don't care. Treat your hardware like data, okay. Uh, that is exactly what I want to do. So yeah, that actually doesn't really un help us understand the issue. So how do we get something that we don't yet have. So this here assumes um, that there is something called peripherals, which uh, has this function take serial, and it, it somehow had the serial, but where did it take the serial from, right? So yeah, it's 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 a bit of a mystery here. So I can I can only take the serial if it's already there. But actually, we, so we, we already have the serial and now we want to pass it to somewhere. So, um, yeah, so with, with the mutex pattern that we looked at last time and what we still have here in a way, um, that somehow worked, but uh, yeah, let's, let's actually look at the code before and what it's now. So. Let's look at the div here. So before we were saying uh, we, we now have this mutex here and we instantiate uh, a wrap serial. Okay, oh. So, but we instantiate a new mutex for it. And that's the thing that hadn't worked. So um, this here, try call once. That was the problem that hadn't worked. So yeah, <laughs> I actually had this fix me message here. Uh, seems broken. Um, yeah, it, I guess it was. So how else would you set that variable? Is there like, 
Huh. So if, if we look at this here, um, here, here we're saying, okay, and we're saying log, logger, inner, and now the inner thing uh, is this mutex thing. So do we, do we have to do something like, so do we artificially need to create something that will contain uh, our mutex or well our, our rep zero in this instance? So we, we could just define something like this here and instead of saying inner mutex s, uh, we could just say inner I mean, we can do this here, right? So let, let's say we, we define the struct. Uh, we just call it logger. I don't really care about log whatever, because currently we don't have the mutex anyway. So it's, it's not a log anymore. Um, now I just want to be able to say uh, logger. Now the inner is this here. And let's look at the diff again. So yeah, be before we were saying, okay, log logger inner M. So what I would now do is, okay, logger. And I essentially do the same thing, right? So Yeah, but the, the thing is, so this okay here, this is actually returning a value, and this is for uh, for this, this function here, um, which, which is called for uh, this logger try call once. Um, and that isn't even the original uh, call. So if we look at this here, uh, let's actually trace this back a bit. So let's look at the history of the file. Um, so, Let's look at the history of the source log rs. And for the first iteration, where I just copied things over, um, we were just using uh, call once. And in call once, I was returning, so instead of saying okay something, I was just returning log logger here. Um, huh, interesting. So this is creating a new log logger, and that would somehow now start to appear in, in logger. But how that works is something uh, hidden underneath in the implementation of the mutex crate, or well, in, in the spin crate where mutex is coming from. So that doesn't work for us, so we would need something else. Um, can we say, Can we can we say this here is an, an option for logger? And this here is now, well, I don't know, logger. So we would just do exactly what the uh, rest book is um, telling us not to do, right? So we let's let's keep the unsafe for now. So uh, let's let's say logger the uppercase logger again. Logger, does it does it work like that? Logger dot inner equals rep zero. Um, no, no field inner on type option logger. Uh, and that isn't even happy. So expected value from yeah, I mean. How do you even do this? Do you say like logger new like this? No, that doesn't work. It says no function or associated item name new. So yeah, mm, that won't work. So, I mean, we, we can still start with a none but then we, we would just be recreating the same problem that we already had, right? So we would now say 
uh, logger dot none that doesn't really work can we say logger equals logger and now inner is wrap serial obviously not so now again we're down to expected enum option and it found a struct logger well yeah how do how do you replace something in an option in rust rust replace option option and std option can be none or oh do we say can we actively assign some oh look this here I guess that's what we need to do. So we can, can we do this here? Interesting. Now it's just a bit unhappy. Uh, it says it's expecting a struct called log wrap, but it found the struct serial. Um, hang on. So we, we do have wrap here. Oh. Yeah, yeah, right, because S is already a wrap. Okay, so if at all, we would need to do this here. Okay, great, so that would work. Um, and now this here would also still work, as it seems. So, yeah, let's actually see what happens if we uncomment this code now. Okay, so, yeah, we, we just need to remove the wait thing here, because now we don't have a mutex anymore. Uh, we don't have the lock thing anymore. Um, and now we we have this little problem here. So a logger is now an option. So it means that um, we, we can actually run into the situation where logger is not set, right? So yeah, we, what we can do is we can, we can say we match. We, we can say match. And we can say if we have some, so we can say match logger. And if we have some logger, uh, we just do this here. Otherwise, we just don't do anything. Uh, how does that work? Can I do like like in JavaScript, like in a in a real language? Can we do this here? No. Um, what is what is the syntax of Mac? Ah, match needs a. An arrow. Okay. So this year, does it? Hang on. We need the arrow like this. Okay, that almost worked. Now we have a lot more red again. Um, can assign to a muta immutable static item logger. Okay, so we make it mutable, right? Uh, instead of saying, oh, hang on. So logger has to be mutable. Can we just put mute here? Expected type. Uh, static mute logger. Does it work like, like this here? Oh, look, that looks better again. So use of mutable static is unsafe and requires, yeah, of course, everything needs to be unsafe in Rust. Unsafe Rust is the best Rust. It's like the any type in uh, in TypeScript. So any is like the type if you don't bother defining a type or you don't actually know the type yourself. So I cannot move out of logger.0 as logger is a static item. Uh, how about this? No field zero on type option logger. Okay. Um, So, should we need to get rid of the inner something thing? Maybe, maybe. What does it actually say? No field zero on type option logger. Okay, back to this here. Um, Move occurs because L has type logger, which does not implement the copy trait. But we don't want to copy anything. We just want to use it. 
So we need a way to tell Rust to let us use it and do not copy anything. So I I have a I have a vague memory now that I've done something similar by copying from somewhere else in a different project and that was for a batch that we created with our hackerspace um, this year. So I also started writing some Rust code for it. That would be this year. So let's see how we did that here. Now in source main.rs here, uh, we also have static something. Oh look, but here we were actually using mutexes. Mm. It's a bit unhappy about things here. I don't know why it worked uh, before. Uh, anyway, so we want to use something like this here. And now this here, if you look at this, it's defined as, oh, look, uh, there is nothing mutable here. So it's the same mutex thing again. But yeah, this is now from, so we have an ESP32 core on this, so it's the extensa, uh, so it's an extensa ESP32, extensa being just a different, um, it's uh, a, again a, a different ISA, so an, a different instruction set than the uh, RISC five instruction set that we have. Um, so yeah, this is why you know you you have some some different definition of mutex here. So yeah, I have no idea how this works um, without being able to use a mutex, which is a pity. But let's actually see if there is something a bit different about the mutex and how it's used here. So if we look at the uh, instance of serial here, uh, okay, we see the lock being called on the serial. Um, okay, so this here is using replace. Uh-huh, okay. So can we do, huh. I mean, actually the initial part looks looks fine so far. So we can already set the logger, but now we just cannot use it. Rest, cannot, cannot move. Let's use for it in, in quotes. So cannot move out of whatever something zero uh, as something is a static item. So how can I move structs containing vec to or from a static array without getting whatever error message? Um, yeah, is it actually the same issue? Is it what we see here? So what do they say? Huh. Stood memory place. Uh huh. Well, we don't actually want to replace or, or copy anything. I don't even know why Rust would want to copy here. I don't want to copy anything. I just want to use it. So do we have to, do we have to put a star here? Or, or an and or something so that it doesn't even try to copy anything. Oh look, now it looks a bit different. Cannot borrow as mutable, refers to whatever, refers to cannot be, whatever it refers to cannot be borrowed as mutable. So, so we match and mute logger. Oh, look, it's fixed. So yeah, and, and Rust just make everything unsafe and mutable and then it works. Lesson of the day. So yeah, I'm actually being very cynical here because this always messes me up all the time. Um, it's probably not how you do things, but it's the only solution I usually find, uh, wh which is a bit strange because I would expect something which, um, you know, wants to force you to do something in a safe manner, uh, you know, w without doing such such dirty things to actually assist you with doing it in a, uh, in a, in a bit of a safe manner. But um, yeah, if, if anyone is really proficient in Rust, please tell me. 
So let's see if this code now compiles actually. So let's make, oh, it looks like it works. So let's make run it. I will hit the boot mode button. Uh oh, it says bad file. This oh, yeah. Okay, that's actually explainable. So let me um, let me quickly show you something that I bought now uh, and which also re resolves this issue here. So I got this beautiful thing here from Muse Lab. Um, you cannot really see it properly here. It's a WCH uh, serial converter, but this here has two UARTs on it. So I can use both UARTs from this one adapter. I don't actually have to have a second one as I had it before. Um, but I had that in my uh, in my script actually. So let's quickly change the make file here instead of um, where does it even say that? Oh, hang on. I actually have it in my global script. So in my uh, something vision vision five something vision vision no jh something oh refresh this year. So yeah, instead of USB zero, it's now ACM zero. And lo and behold, uh, I got the wrong script, I guess. Hang on. Oh, right, this here, ah, this is for, for reflashing, but we don't want to reflash. We just want to re recover. So, oh, this is actually a binary. Hang on, what does the make file call again? It calls the JH7100 recover. But oh, look, okay, it is in the make file after all. Sorry, I haven't seen that actually. So um, let's do the following. Let's make this a variable also. So let's see, uh, let's call it serial because it's a serial anyway. It's actually, whatever. Um, so serial equals Is it colon equals now? So when, when I say colon equals, and now I say make run, and I say serial equals def uh, ttyacm0. Look. And it's doing things or not. I don't know. OK, now it works. Great. Oh, and look at this here. We see the hello. So this hello here is now coming from our code. So uh, looking at the wrong thing here, looking at the wrong, okay. So back on track. So this now means we can actually use our macro. So instead of print whatever, uh, we do this here, we don't do that. And now we can continue with this. We can do all of this here and we're now going to replace everything which we had initially uh, with serial.fmt whatever. So instead we're going to say print bang. We don't need okay anymore. We already have that so yeah. And instead of saying print we can actually use print line also in most instances so we don't have to uh, do this line break thing ourselves um, here we say print again print 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 p p r i n t it's actually a bit of a bad angle that i have here for my monitor um yeah it, it is what it is so we're saying uh, print colon x. So we do the hex representation um, of each of those slices that we iterate over. So we want to print the slices in. So these are like four byte slices. Um, or, or is it, no, it's actually single bytes, whatever. So yeah, we, we're printing 32 bytes here. There's probably also a more elegant way of doing that, but I don't care right now but we need to print each of those bytes here. Um, and what we're doing is uh, we're just using print so that we get it in the same line. We don't want to have a line break after each of those bytes. So yeah, again, uh, this here is print ln. Uh, 
And again, this year is just print. And that's actually the same thing as this year. So what we could also do is, uh, we could also make a function um, to which we just pass an, an address and a length, and it should just print whatever in there, right? So let's actually do that. So let's say we, we just copy this. Um, so let's, let's call it fn dump. So we give an adder, it's a u64, or is it a uint? Uh, uint 60, no, it's just u64, I think. Uh, it doesn't have a return value, it just does the following. It does a let slice be slice from raw parts. We take the adder. Mm. Oh, right. And we need a we need a length. Length. Length is also a U64 or whatever. It could also be U32. Uh, are the addresses actually U64 or U32? There is also U size. So U size should be referring to the architecture. Like if it's a 64 bit thing, um, it should work like this. Instead of, so I made a period. Slice from raw parts, cannot find functions, slice from raw parts in the scope. Yeah, because it's not in the scope. Um, so where does slice from raw parts come from? It comes from core pointer. So yeah, let's just globally import this uh, here or something. Uh, pointer, whatever. All right. All right, so now in, instead of doing this here, we can just say dump. Uh, oh, right, we, we need to have the length. So the length is going to be here, lang, la, length, length, and also here. Okay, um, that is a bit unhappy. Why is it unhappy? Expected you okay. It also needs to be use size. All right. So now we can we can use the dump function instead of using a dump function. So we just say dump dump. Wow, that looks much more elegant again. So yeah, we're gonna do the same thing here uh, with the other address. Sorry, my bad. Like this, and we need to do the same thing again. So where do we where do we have this again? Or do we actually no? We actually only had those two instances. Okay, let's see if this runs again. So we make run again. And no, it works. I guess using the um, this other instance here of accessing the Syria is not such a good idea. So let's just quit picocom. We don't need it anyway. Okay, so we got this here. It's saying orboot. Uh, we get the crab, uh, but it stops with the crab. So yeah, let's see. Um, what happens here? So we have the we have the first print ln. So print ln is uh, this here. Let's just do another print ln and let's let's just print another crab again in orboot. Let's see if that works. So do we get two of those? It looks to me a bit like um, with this fancy second USB zero thing. Uh, it doesn't really work properly all the time, which is interesting. So I, I guess I do have to have an, another instance on Picocom. It seems super strange. 
but it makes it work in some occasions. I don't know why. Okay, we see Orboot and Orboot again, which is good. So we know it, we can actually close this here from last time where we looked at another implementation. Uh, we can close this also, okay. Good, so this works, um, doing this here twice. So what else? Uh, we're doing this here, right volatile, right volatile. Um, yeah, th this here is actually not really necessary. I think we should we should anyway copy uh, comment this out. So yeah, we we should now see this here. Because we saw that printing works at least. So this here should work. And it's taking a bit longer. But hey, it works. So three, two, one, and we're continuing the boot process. Now there is only one issue with that. Um I actually don't have my network adapter connected so nothing will happen now i have it right here so it says warning device may contain internet it's a dangerous device so if you look at this here it has an ethernet port besides the usb ser uh, the usb port so do i have a network cable at hand um i actually think so okay so yeah uh, just hang on for a while uh, while I'm trying to find a different cable here. All right, so um, it was actually on the desk all along. I just didn't see it because I have a pile of stuff here. So Ethernet, it's a rather short wire, but it's okay. So let's plug things in. I might need to actually restart the center tool because it's been running for a while and I guess it's been listening to a port that wasn't available any longer and I have no idea what happened to it. But first, let's let's plug things in. And let's see. So we're in U-Boot now here. When I say boot, it could technically work. It says broadcast, broadcast. Uh oh, that doesn't seem to work yet. Let's see. Do we have an IP address? Yes, we do. This year. Um. Yeah. So we're just gonna restart that. Uh, and I'm unable to type my password today. Um, multiple times. All right. So let's do the same thing again. Okay, now that looks a bit better. And this is now similar to the issue that we already had last time where uh, it was saying loading uh, and then nothing really happened again. Um, I'm not sure why yet. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a bit of a different issue. We haven't had this issue before. Um, but nevertheless, so we already achieved what I wanted to do today, which is really just to set up this global logger thing so that we can use the macro. Um, yeah, if, if, anybody is, if anybody is willing to uh, figure out how it works with the actual mutex, that would be excellent. So, yeah.
Let's see. Let's maybe re just rerun this again uh, and see what happens now. Oh look, now the reset was also working better. And Initialized. Come on. Okay. Auto boot. Where is the auto boot? So we, we had the similar issue also last time. It's not clear yet why this is happening or what is happening here, but yeah, I guess that's for another day anyway. Um, and we have almost reached the full hour for today. So what we're going to do now is the following. We will commit. So first of all, the make file. Um, so what do we write here? Uh, this is the vision 5 store. No, it's the store 5 vision 5 one. Uh, uh, whatever, parameterize uh, zero to use in make file. And what else has changed? A lot has changed here. Um, yeah, this is really mostly for using the global logger. Have we done anything else? Yeah, not really. Yeah, I, I moved this thing here further down. That's okay. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a mystery still what some of those uh, things here mean, uh, but that's okay. Yeah, I, I put a reference here on, on zero UARTs. I don't know why actually, but it's, it's always interesting to read about that stuff. Yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, let's just say git commit. Uh, I actually do the same thing as above, just Sam. So this is now committing everything. So uh, make logger a global instance. This now enables us to use the print print ln macros. Now we make a smiley face because we're happy about it. All right, so. Um, git push. So yeah, if we now look on uh, GitHub, so we, we have this work in progress pull request, right? That's uh, what we've been working on for a while now in, in our boot. And that's this one. And now we also have this latest code. So we actually have a, a bunch of things that we have been developing over the course of the last months. Um, oh, look. Oh. <laughs> I actually got some comment at some, yeah, but I had already replied to that. Um, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that, it's not really important right now. Um, so, yeah, you can uh, look at all of this here. It's pull request number 606 in the Orboot project on GitHub. So github.com slash Orboot slash Orboot. And then we have a bunch of pull requests, it's eight currently. Um, so yeah, you can now look at uh, how uh, how we did things over the months actually, because we, we have all these uh, different commits here. Some of them being a bit uh, rather sparse. Uh, some were like simplify, 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 mostly copying over existing code. Um, but yeah, uh, we, we are at this point now um, where the print macro works. So. Yeah, that is something uh, we, we actually need to figure this out for the entire Orbit project. So we had this before uh, where we had a global macro, um, but there was a condition for using the macro. You would need to pass a writer to the macro. So you would need to say where um, you, you would actually do the output. So you, you couldn't just say print, but you had to say, um, I, th I think we just called it write. And then you would need to pass an, an instance of uh, multiple or, or, or a single. Um, doesn't really matter right now, but we, you were actually able to also log to uh, multiple uh, serial ports or wh whatever was actually implementing the driver model that we had. Um, 
because because everything was essentially able to you know just be used as a serial um or well as a an output so technically um you could also make a function for let's say an led to output your uh information right so you, you can just blink an led like when you do uh, morse code or something uh, it's maybe not too helpful uh, but technically it works um, but yeah depending on your situation when you're debugging things uh, it can be helpful to use just anything you have available right now so any output um, can be used as a signal to see you know where you made it or uh, how far you get or whatever anyway um yeah long story short uh, recap we have our uh, print macro now working here and it looks like we can just use it right away without actually having to have a mutex um, which which hadn't worked so yeah we're, we're doing this here now and technically we don't even need to do this inner thing I guess I guess we can also just say um, whatever I don't know I, I guess we can also just uh, do an assignment directly to this year so instead of saying option logger um which which is uh <laughs> again it's 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 wrapping a wrapper to a serial that seems a bit nuts so we can probably just uh say uh we, we just use an option for serial uh, or or an option for s actually right so s is already wrapping the serial so that we can implement some traits from from our crate here or well from embedded hell actually so yeah um, now this is where things come together again so last time we were talking about the embedded hell and oh you see this here is actually expecting uh, to implement the embedded hell serial peripheral uh, and we want to implement the right method so yeah this is why uh, when, when you when you search for right here um, yeah, you, you see that we say impl, uh, impl fmt write, um, and then we're, we're using this here, write stir, and write stir, I think that is actually coming from embedded hell right now. I, I'm, I'm not too sure right now, to be honest. Um, yeah, maybe that's something to look up again, but what we can definitely do is uh, we can definitely remove those things which we're not using right now, right? So this here, uh, and that. So yeah, now everything looks a bit cleaner again. Yeah, it's it's maybe not the safest thing, uh, but that's what we have the unsafe keyword here for, right? So that we actually know that what we're doing here is unsafe. Um, yeah. And, and currently, I mean, we, we don't have much code anyway, right? We, we just need to initialize the serial once and then print a bunch of times. So yeah, that, that's all okay here. But yeah, do let me know if you uh, if you have a better solution. Um, yeah, I will, I will just push another commit now for cleaning things up. Um, and with that, thank you very much for joining us again. And yeah, next time I want to see uh, if we can... Um, talk about something else finally after doing this so um yeah we, we will see that we define another stage so i, I was saying that um, we might uh, re-implement the dram initialization code uh the thing is if you look at the original implementation it's just you know writing magic values to magic registers so yeah, it's it's not much a, a value that we gain from just translating that um so we can see if we can just uh shorten that a bit and then maybe um, yeah rewrite the uh, SBI implementation for example with Rust SBI that would be something very desirable um, and see that we can then uh, run uBoot from there so yeah but yeah I'm not yet sure if we also want to replace uBoot with a Linux kernel uh, because the problem with writing to the flash here is so slow over the uh, protocol that is in use here the X modem transfer um yeah maybe maybe we can get away with just doing it once otherwise i don't know we have to find another option and with that thank you very much and yeah see you next time take care